In today's video, I want to show you seven different types of Geneva drives or Geneva mechanisms, plus a simplified model of a film projector and how it works using a Geneva drive. This is the most common type of Geneva drive, and this one has six slots, but can also be made with a different number of slots depending on how many degrees you want it to rotate. The rotating drive wheel has a pin that slides through a slot and advances it one step at a time. The drive wheel also has a raised disc that locks the driven wheel into position between steps. So it holds the driven wheel in place until the next rotation. And these are mostly used in older film projectors and mechanical watches. They're also used in manufacturing for indexing tables. This variation is an internal Geneva drive where the indexing components are within the driven wheel. The pin is located on the end of an arm and engages the slots in the wheel to rotate it. On the other end of the arm is a semicircle that locks the wheel between indexes. So that semicircle locks in here as it comes around on the bottom. And you can see that a little bit better here where it locks in so that the driven wheel can't rotate while it's locked in place. This one is a spherical drive where the driven wheel is actually spherical in shape and not only indexes but it transfers the motion at a right angle. So the driving wheel is this shaft and then the driven wheel is at a right angle to this shaft. This next drive uses two sets of pins and the driving wheel only has one slot. This one is reversed from the standard model because the driving wheel has a slot and the driven wheel has the pins. The indexing finger on the drive wheel advances the driven wheel far enough for the slot to engage a pin. So the indexing finger will come around and hit on this yellow pin and push it far enough until this slot engages on this pin. And then it will advance the driven wheel and in between it can't move because it's locked between these two pins against this diameter. So again it comes around, pushes on the yellow pin far enough, engages with the larger pin and the outer circle that advances it, it's locked in place, and then this just continues on, indexing the wheel. This one uses a linkage arm and a pin to advance the indexing wheel. In between rotations, a slide is engaged in the slot to prevent rotation of the wheel. So this linkage arm with this pin on the end comes up and engages each slot and rotates the wheel. And when it disengages, this slide on, on this end comes into the slot and locks the wheel so it can't turn until this pin is engaged and the slide is out of the slot. And here's a little better angle so you can see this pin engaging with the slot. 
So this one has slots and this raised edge on the driving wheel. And as this comes around, it hits on the pin and starts turning this star here, this four star with the pins in it, until the pins go through this slot. And then the slot continues pushing on the pins top and bottom, turning this. And in between, the four pins are locked on this outer ring, preventing this from turning between indexes. So here you can see how this raised edge hits this pin and starts turning. And then this pin is coming up through the slot and continues through the slot, getting pushed around until it's, it's indexed one turn. And you can see on the bottom as it comes around and that pin goes through the slot on the bottom side of the wheel. And this one is called a rapid acting drive. You can see how much faster it indexes this wheel. It rotates it pretty quickly. So this one has a driving wheel with a single indexing finger. And it does not have a slot on here. The indexing finger advances the driven wheel in increments. In between rotations, the driven wheel is prevented from turning by two pins that are tangent to the outer diameter of the driving wheel. So as I rotate this around, the indexing finger hits a pin. See, it hits this pin and just clears this one. And as it advances, it pushes this pin around. One turn. And then in between, it's locked with these pins against this diameter. This is a very simplified model of a film projector to demonstrate how a Geneva drive advances the film. A crank or motor would be rotated continuously and at a constant speed to advance the film. The film is pulled through the projector with the sprocket wheel and there's teeth on the sprocket wheel that engage in these square cutouts in the film and they pull it through. So the Geneva drive, which you can see back here, advances the film intermittently and stops each frame for a precise amount of time. And here you can see how it advances the film one frame at a time as I turn the crank. In an actual film projector, the Geneva drive would be much smaller for speed, but I've made it larger so you can see how it functions. This is an actual silent film projector. And this particular one is a Powers camera graph from the early 1900s. And the Geneva drive would be in here. And it's in this housing, which is full of oil, so that would be constantly lubricated to reduce friction. The camera graph would actually use this kind of drive because it could index the film faster. And then the drive sprocket would be on this shaft.